felt a bit like an outsider when I started or when I came this morning here and heard about um, all this good advice to become an entrepreneur, to be, become successful in, in this business. But it also gave me a lot of things to remember because when I finished my studies, 98 or so, I was lucky to become a, um, a software developer in a, in a university spin-out. We used a feature-rich AI application using case-based reasoning, widely unknown at that time, still widely unknown, unfortunately. And the small company had a, an environment, I think, like here at the moment, with lots of advice, with business angels, with local um, sponsors, funding agencies. Um, and the company grew from five people, I was number five in the company, to 300 when I left, unfortunately, after the dot-com bubble burst. So the company shrank quite a bit. But it was at that time a Bertelsmann company, was later bought by Attensity, and is still running. But nobody's talking about case-based reasoning anymore. In that way. What I can say to you is really, you need to have a CEO with a strong vision, who enjoys what he is doing, but also has business sense. So if you are a technical person, try to get that business sense or have people around you that you trust, another very important lesson, and work with them together on making your product great. But I don't want to talk more about my background and my history here. It's more about yeah, artificial intelligence and case-based reasoning using it for recommender systems. Artificial intelligence has fascinated me from when I was little, and it still does. I think it's the most exciting software technology, approach, methodology, whatever you want to call it out there, an idea. It's also laden with a lot of negative thoughts. And you have heard Stephen Hawking talking about that we will uh, lose to AIs at some point. Well, it's a bit time until then, and we always, we always discussed what, what we do with our tools. You know, as well as I, what you can do with a knife, you can use it as a tool, you can use it as a weapon. Same for AI. And there are lots of um, problematic decisions out there. We as, as a public as well have to, to think about what we want to do there. Looking at the NSA, GCHQ, looking at drones being not only um, remote controlled, but being able to decide autonomously, do we want to have that? But I'm a technology optimist, so I want to introduce you to case-based reasoning. Listening to uh, the Adobe keynote last year struck really a chord with me. So we as consumers expect relevant, interactive, personalized material wherever we are, by the CEO of Adobe, Shantanu Narayan. Um, that's what AI is really good at. It's helping you with this interactive bits, the personalized material, gaming and all these kind of um, methods that you bring in into your application to make the customer experience more enjoyable. And where case-based reasoning is especially good is having with the relevant bit to decide something relevant, something similar to what you need. And the CEO was backed up by David Vodvani, senior vice president of Adobe. The new frontier is experience. It's about cross-selling. It's about cross-media marketing, branding, shorter cycles, being available to deliver that in shorter time. But what they all talk about is this kind of experience, right? Like an unforgettable trip somewhere. That's not what I mean. It's about specific knowledge obtained from a specific problem-solving context. That is really valuable, usable knowledge. That's something we can harness. So, for example, technicians 
when they look at some problem with some machinery, they might remember some similar piece of technology where they found the solution. They try to adapt the old solution. If you're looking at the doctor, looking at symptoms, and identifying some disease by remembering past symptoms, past patients. Or in law, especially in the American law, case-based law. You look at past cases that were helpful in winning a case, and you apply them. So we can use this kind of anecdotal experience and put them in kind of stories. A printer repairman remembers a similar failure of printer in the past. The problem was my printer has white streaks. I printed on paper. Cleaning the printer did not help. The solution was the ink cartridge was low in toner. The solution, the diagnosis was the ink cartridge was low in toner and the solution was to replace the ink cartridge. A doctor remembers the symptoms of a bacterial infection from another patient. A patient has fever, blood tests show high count of white blood cells, pa patient X tells about holidays in Central Africa. And diagnosis, oh, it's probably some tropical infection, and prescribes further blood tests and other things. And the important part now is that these here, these individual elements, we can put, make it more formal. We can put them in some formalism. Simple attribute value lists, in object-oriented models, in semantic nets, whatever you like. And we call these kind of elements cases. In the case, in the traditional sense, it's a problem plus the solution. The same for our doctor's problems. Problem plus solution. So in that way, case-based reasoning is a cognitive approach. It's for modeling human problem-solving behavior, because that is how we typically solve problems. We don't go by textbooks. Remember similar problems and make something of it. So CBR is reasoning by remembering. And we have developed that over many years into an engineering approach for developing and implementing intelligent systems. So it's an approach to problem solving and learning. And the basic idea is really simple. We have a new problem and a so-called case base where you have lots of past cases, old problem, old solution pairs. So they prove to be useful. You try to find the best matching one, reuse the old solution, build from the new solution and the new problem a new case, and you store it. You learn. That's the basic definition of any intelligent system, of intelligence, its ability to learn. So the key phrase here, the key aspect is similarity. How do you express that? For recommender systems, we make the system a little bit simpler. We don't have the problem-solution pairs, but we have some specification, some requirements. And via similarity-based retrieval, we look up the proper products and services. And to do that in a quicker way, we could use, for example, MyCBR, an open source software system that's available uh, from my university and the German Research Center for Artificial Intelligence. Use it for recommender systems. And a simple recommender system, as an example, you want to recommend used cars. What do you do? You model your cars by body model, color, mileage, manufacturer, for example. Put them in your system. You have your attributes. You have allowed values. That's an important bit for being able to describe similarity. You have to know what fits in into your attributes. And you can even be object-oriented, if you like, and make more complex objects to compare. The similarity knowledge needs to be told to the system. And there are various ways of doing that. 
for example, similarity tables. So if you know what kind of manufacturers you have, so Audi, BMW, Mercedes, and Volkswagen, you could model how similar they are to each other. In the diagonal, you will have 100% similarity, and, and the other fields are somewhere in between. And for numerical values, you can describe similarities with functions. And there are lots of ways of doing that, um, but I won't go into detail with that. Having modeled that into the system, you have the structure of the case, you have the cases in the case space and the similarity knowledge. You can then go for similarity-based retrieval. You describe your object that you're looking for. Here it's fully described query. And you would get back from the system an ordered list of results. That's a big difference to, sim to SQL retrieval. In SQL retrieval, you can only tell how, say, how many examples you want to, back, you want to uh, get back from the system. In case-based reason, you always get an ordered list. So ordered by their similarity to the requirements. This was a quite simple example. Think about recommending experience from a recording studio. So that's one field that we teach at the university, applied sound engineering. Students have to learn to identify certain kinds of sounds in how it sounds tinny, hollow, or rich, and to have to modify them. And this system, we build a recommender system that describes a lot of characteristics of a given sample, and then recommend a workflow from something sounding tinny to something that's sounding more bassy, for example. And that is suggested as configuration for the, um, the recording system. And to make it more techy, so that you can use MyCBR if you want to and try it out, we have built also a comma separate value list importer, which allows you to build quickly your initial model. Let's assume we have this uh, CSV list with column headers. You can generate attributes easily from the column headers because you just take the names. Then you look into the columns for the data types and guess from it. It's a symbol, is it a Boolean float integer, and so on. And generate from that the initial model. At last, you generate the instances and you have your case space. You can then go right away to your similarity base similarity measure editors and try out if that works how you want to. If you want to know more, go to that URL, download your copy, try it out, play with it, and give us feedback. So what are my take home message of this brief talk? Case-based reasoning is the method of choice whenever you need to compare products and services. That might be products like on Amazon, so it's content-based um, comparison compared to collaborative retrieval, which is how Amazon has implemented most of their recommendation system. They are just looking in the basket what they have, what other customers have bought. But here it's looking at the characteristics of a product. But think wider. Think about other things on the web. Think about web services. And think about the Internet of Things. If you're in a system or in a, a web that is unreliable to some degree, you need to have other services that you use if one is not available. If you have the characteristics of the service that you need, you could use, for example, MyCBR for doing exactly that. Build your knowledge model, build your similarity measures for it, and have a lightweight uh, system to give you other products and services or access to devices. If you have modeled with the MyCBR workbench, so that's our graphical user interface for it, you can then use just the SDK 
to implement it. It works also on Android phones. We had some um, master theses that worked it out. Thank you for your attention. Thank you very much, Thomas. So I took a lot about learn from that. So with the great tools that you built, I have the feeling that even I could start building something in artificial intelligence. Absolutely. So yeah, my programming days are long over, but it sounds like a, I should like jump a wave and go directly to artificial intelligence. So that's, that's fantastic. So since you managed like in good German fashion to finish like in time, <laughs> we'll have time for asking a, a couple of questions from the audience while our next speaker is setting up. So there's a question over there. So can we have somebody with a microphone going there? Yeah, somebody with a microphone is coming. OK. So my name is Jean-Paul Firpiro from Accenture. Um, I have a question related to um, this learning process. So from what I understood, uh, the learning can be automatically done by the artificial intelligence, so with a new case that has been um, matched to an existing case in the database. What about if you have a new case, and that case uh, contradicts with existing cases? So is the system able to unlearn some existing cases, or so correct them? So that's one of the things. You don't have this concept of contradiction in that way. Because you, if something is contradicting in your similarity model, and that was too short to show you how the similarity is calculated, it would have a very low similarity measure. So from the point of view of retrieving this contradicting case, it doesn't um, affect the retrieval in that way. But it's exactly a point where um, knowledge maintenance is important. So that you have scripts, queries that run over the case base and find out extreme values. Or in that case, when you solve the problem, the new case that you then have, and you say that that really didn't fit with what they got from the system, a good user interface would flag that up. Okay, and then a human would intervene to correct the system. Exactly, yeah. Okay. So you can't get the human out of that, that circle. Okay, so AI is still in its infancy also there. Oh yes, I think <laughs> software, computer science is in its infancy. <laughs> so I'm at the moment uh, the also head of technology um, in an interim position in the school and looking at civil engineering and other engineering areas where we have so much more knowledge or so much more time about standards um, that in, we are in computer science we are always falling over, over our own feet <laughs> trying to catch up with current developments. So. Okay, thank you. Okay. So. We'll take one more question until we go to the next speaker. So I've seen like somebody behind there raised their hand if I'm not mistaken. Or I might have been mistaken, okay, anyway. So I, as I really don't see if anybody has any other question, uh, in this case, if you have further questions to Thomas, then please uh, catch him later on, he'll be here. So thank you very much, Thomas. Thanks. <laughs>